Bible says, Omosomo, a land where the water never runs dry. So much water, yet none is safe to drink. This land has been before some great, great, great grandparents were born. But when it comes to development, there's very little about this place to be proud of. Very little. My name is Nev Harrison. I am an entertainer and a writer. Omosomo is one of the River Rhine communities under Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. Omosomo is made up of two communities, namely Omosomo Waterside and Omosomo Inland. Omosomo is accessed majorly by water, either through small sized speed engine boats. Or the larger cargo carrying boats with a reputation for traveling twice as slow as the smaller ones. Now this is a typical cargo carrying boat. It carries cargo and passengers. Building materials, uh, cooking items, uh, household items for sale, all kinds of uh, materials needed for the daily living of the people in the community. They load them in boats like these and go for the ride, which is about once a week. These larger boats make it possible for traders and builders alike to convey their goods from other parts of Delta State to Omosomo and its neighboring River Rhine communities. As the boat departs, it begins to rain. The passengers proceed to lift their hands up, but the rain isn't why their hands are all lifted up. Lifting up of hands is a routine practice by passengers in boats either departing hey, or arriving on Kwagbe water side. This practice isn't a call to prayer. It is just a step taken to avoid harassment from a nearby military checkpoint. From Okwagbe water side, it takes at most an hour 30 minutes for a boat of this size to get to Omosomo water side. The most difficult part of the trip is the journey between Omosomo water side and Omosomo inland. From here, the boat ride switches from slow and smooth to painful and mentally sapping. This is because the river that connects the water side to the inland has multiple shallow points along the way which makes the journey unpleasant, especially at low tide. Depending on the time of year, this river also play host to lots of water hyacinth and timbers stacked together. These timbers are popularly known as Gedu. The water hyacinth and timber combination poses a challenge especially during the first quarter of every year. The fear of colliding with the timbers, which are oftentimes hidden under water hyacinth, and the presence of tree stumps lying like ambush predators under the shallow water is the reason this simple journey on a big boat can painfully extend by some two additional hours. It turns into a bigger nightmare if the journey is embarked on at night. The smaller speed boats make the journey easier. They can make the trip from Okwagbe water side all the way to Omosomo inland within 45 to 50 minutes. Stay 
But these smaller boats are not totally spared from the challenges faced by the bigger ones. The propellers of their engines have been known to collide with giant tree stumps currently hidden underneath the surface of the water. This occurs especially at low tide. Stray timbers drifting away also create problems when hit by engine propellers if not seen on time. When the tide is low, moving slowly and cautiously along this path is the only way boats of any size can avoid collisions that comes with regrettable consequences. The river flowing within Omosomo Axis has a distinct blackish color which separates it from every other surrounding river. This unique color begins from a particular entry point on the way into the community. Occasionally, this blackish color changes to the same as that of other surrounding rivers as seen here and here. But it always reverses to its original color with time and stays that way. occupation of the people of Homosomo is farming and fishing. While the language spoken is Urobo language. This right here is actually the beginning point of Omosomo Water Site. It begins here and stretches all the way down. Right from this point. Starts here and all the way, goes all the way down. If you can see the buildings at the far end. Annihilation of all forms of waterborne diseases starts with the availability of clean potable water. These multiple overhead tanks are evidence that efforts were made in the past to provide clean, safe water for the people of Omosomo Waterside. <laughs> We use to wash, we use to cook, we use it to bathe, and inside the same river, people defecate inside, which is not good. So why are the people still dependent on the river as their only source of water supply? knowing full well that it exposes them to all categories of waterborne diseases. What happened to the borehole water system which even came with its own generator? It's not clean. When the borehole was made, we were all very happy that we would not gotten a borehole. But unfortunately, 
The water that came out of the well, it's no different from that of the river. It's as if the two of them are the same thing. The river is dark. The color of the water is dark. It's brown. And the color of the boho is also brown and it is oily. It has that oily substance on top of the water by the time you fetch the water so the people could not use it or see if they are still using the river water that's why the borehole has been abandoned and not used anymore the borehole wasn't deep enough to push to the surface level the recommended type of water that is globally accepted as clean and safe for human consumption so what we want the government to do is to give us clean drinking water well, we know that we will not have any problem like cholera or things that are to do with uh, uh, water. So that is what we are asking of. They should look for the experts that will come and really give us uh, good water in this village. This is meant to be a functional manual water supply system in the community but it never functioned right from the very day it was installed. So it has just been this, serving a mere decorative purpose. The two prominent wells found within the community are currently unusable. On this day of recording, I couldn't help but notice the visible petroleum product covering the surface of the water which stretched as far as the eyes could see. It was likely from a spill some distance outside of the community, yet it flowed all the way through here on its way to almost some more inland. You have a hospital? Eh? You don't have a hospital. So if you fall sick, where do you go to? Okwagwe. You have to go to Okwagwe. Really? Wow. There is not a single healthcare center or even a proposed site for one in the whole of Omosomo Waterside. Falling sick here at odd hours could mean certain death to say the least. This is Omosomo Waterside Primary School. Okay, school yeah. Yeah. Looking at the school, what stands undisputable is the reality that it is currently in need of renovation. This is the headmaster's quarters. The surrounding snake field bushes serve as his toilet, while this makeshift structure is his bathroom. There is a reason Omosomo Waterside appears to have fewer people and fewer buildings compared to what it was more than seven years ago. Before I dig into why this is so, let me quickly take you on a trip to Omosomo Inland. Shuttling from the waterside to the inland via a canoe is both a time and energy consuming process. A single trip could mean paddling endlessly for a long period of time. Speedboats are the quickest means of making this trip, but are almost never available on demand. This leaves residents with a much different alternative, motorcycles. But like the speedboats, these motorcycles are not always available on demand, especially for people living within the waterside access. I am currently on my way to get a motorcycle ride to Omosomo Inland. I have been told that I will have to walk all the way to the market due to the demolition of a vital wooden bridge just ahead that enables motorbikes cross over to this part of town. 
this is actually meant for expanding some of the river portions to connect to some other communities along the waterway. So that's why these equipments are here. These amphibious excavators, also known as swamp boogies, are responsible for the demolition of the wooden bridge ahead that links the market to this part of Omosomo waterside. The heavy duty vehicles that we saw back there a while ago was responsible for the expansion of this waterway. The waterway wasn't as big as this previously. As a matter of fact, there was a wooden bridge that crosses from this end to the other end that connects the market. But during the construction, the bridge was destroyed and the waterway was expanded. It's actually a road expansion all the way to some Burutu River and communities way ahead. But after the expansion, now it has become a problem trying to get the road back. The wooden bridge now, they have no means as of the moment of reconstructing it. So the people of Omosomo now are stuck. So now that the bridge is no longer there, this is the only means now of crossing to the market square by water. You have to go through a canoe. Okay. This is Omosomo Market, which operates solely on market days. On a typical market day, this very location parades a very large crowd comprising of both buyers and sellers from all parts of Omosomo. This new market complex is a government funded project which has been delivered across all riverine communities in Delta State. This is actually some distance after the market. I came here hoping in mind that I was going to get a motorbike that would connect me to Omosomo inland. But when I got here, there was actually no single motorbike. I've been told that the only way to get there is to take the long walk that connects Omosomo waterside and Omosomo inland. When I say a long walk, it's going to take probably two hours or even more just walking down the bush path. So let's see how it goes. Just 30 minutes into it and I'm feeling exhausted. That's a channel. Motorbikes that transport people from almost from water waterside to almost from an inland charge as high as 300 naira per trip to connect both communities. And the motorbikes, they go through this trail right here that I'm in. So even if you have your money for a bike ride, the motorbikes are not just sufficient. At least if there are more motorbikes and maybe a better way of communicating with the transporters, it will make it easier for people trying to crisscross between both communities. But right now, there's actually no way of communicating with the transporters. You have to just hope they are available when you want to move to the other side. One insect just dropped from a tree above and landed on me and just did not even wait to say hello. Just went ahead to bite me somewhere here and then went into my singlet. That's the reason I took off my shirt. Just hurting right here now, hurting. Lots of insects here. You know. Walking for approximately, I have been on this route for approximately one hour, 35 minutes and a bike has just shown up.
can see how bad the road is so we have to get off the bike to walk some distance to meet up ahead because of the bad road at the peak of the rainy season numerous portions of this road becomes messy due to the rains this makes it extremely difficult for motorbikes to shuttle between both communities with ease This is Omosomo Inland. Omosomo Inland has a larger land mass in comparison to Omosomo Waterside. Omosomo Inland has more people and buildings. brand of tricycle is almost more inland steeper. It is used in transporting sand, furniture and all manner of household items within the community. This more popular brand of tricycle known as Keke was brought in for a test run on this very day of recording. 99% of the motorcycles operating in Omosomo are on this side of the village, the inland. During the rainy season, all the roads in Omosomo becomes impassable. Worst among them is the bush path that connects the waterside to the inland. There is no standard road network that links other parts of Delta State to Omosomo inland or Omosomo waterside. Previous road construction projects heading to the inland were abandoned a long time ago. According to the President General, in a speech during one of these APC campaigns, he said they have only 11 kilometers tied road away from here to a neighboring community. So 11 kilometers of road. From here, that a tied road is just from here. Yeah. Like to tie from here to another tied road. 11 kilometers. Going by what Mr. Dogun Cyril just pointed out, the remaining portion of road that needs to be tied in order for vehicles to be able to come in here is about 11 kilometers long. The road is a very a big challenge because there are fixed times we can go out of this town. We go out of the town each five days. That is of our market day. So if there is road, if road can leak here now, we can leave the town anytime and come in anytime. But so you can't just leave anytime? You can't leave anytime because there is no way to leave except a boat is leaving and boats are not common here. As of now, only motorcycles are able to make the trip in and out of Omosomo inland for those who can afford it. These motorcycles, however, cannot go beyond Barigolo where passengers are expected to still travel further out through Bumadi local government area. Omosomo has existed without a secondary school for decades. Before the coming in of the current governor of Delta State, Dr. Ifai Okowa, hopes of ever getting one had faded, especially as a result of the unending cycle of failed promises by elected government officials. But Dr. Ifai Okowa changed all that and renewed the hopes of the people with the construction of a secondary school complex in Omosomo Inland, which was built within the shortest possible time. Before now, children were only left with the option of either abandoning secondary education or relocate to other communities in search of one. This completed project, no doubt, will put an end to the mass migration of children from this community in search of education beyond primary level. But as this calls for celebration, the reverse is the case with the primary school which provides the most basic level of education for children. This 
a Somosomo Inland Primary School, founded in 1955. No one else would have accurate details of the challenges being faced here except, of course, someone that is a part of the workforce. The most difficult problem we have here is teachers. Lack of teachers. Is there anything discouraging teachers from coming to work here? Uh, to me, there are a lot of things. The major thing people capitalize upon is River Ryan. River Ryan. Yes. From time immemorial, career professionals have always resisted the idea of migrating to River Ryan communities to take up job offers. The blame is largely put on the slow pace of development in most of these communities. Then we have no building, no infrastructure, no building, we have building, you can see the world is dilapidated. You see leakage everywhere, and as soon as I start falling, I will not let comfortably. The whole roof is leaking, we park a set in corner. How do you people take care of your health in this place? Yeah, we, are, we have no access to health facilities. What we have is just a Mumbai, let me say, chemist, Mumbai, Mumbai chemist man and the, all those traders as chemists, as health chemists in store. We don't have any, we don't have hospital here, we don't have a center here. There's a building, yes. one isolated building. Yes. I was told that it's actually a health center. Yes. I didn't see anybody there. No. Nobody. Is, that's a health center. It's a health center. Who's building the health it's center? It's by the federal government. It has not been completed. So it's not in use? At all. We have another health center. That one is built by the state government and completed as well. So is there a doctor there? No, 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 no. No doctor? No. It's only occasionally some uh, health center body will come, do some treatment and go back. No permanent no, doctor? No permanent doctor, no permanent nurse. Nurse in this whole community? In this whole community. So what if somebody falls this sick or see. needs urgent medical attention? Is the school free for children? It's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. But there are children of school age that yeah, are not in school. school age, time, yes. That are not in school. Not in school many. Why is it so? And that is an inability for the parents to afford the, the uniform and the other things, books and the rest. Is there, also, is there also a lack of interest? Lack of interest and poverty. If I you go to some homes now, you would think of giving them money to buy a this afternoon. I can see so. And it's so. So in such situations, school will not be interesting to such people? At all. Does it affect their learning abilities, the children, even the ones in school? Uh, as I can tell you now, the required textbooks which are recommended for the children, the pupils, they are able to buy them. Even in the, the numbers of notebooks they're supposed to buy and the right common write up in the school, they cannot afford it. Some have only three notes, some have only four, two notes, we wish mathematics and English language to study are there, which is, which is not fair. On the bright side, this classy looking two bedroom flat was recently built by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC. But while this yet to be commissioned apartment takes care of the accommodation needs of only the headmaster and his family, the rest of the teaching staff who live in partitioned rooms in this uncompleted health center will still have to endure the displeasure that comes with living in a place like this until the authorities intervene on their behalf. Almost more water side on the other hand seem to be far off the radar among schools on government's list of learning centers deserving of intervention projects of any kind. How many teachers are here? Uh, we are four in number, including myself, the head teacher. Three teachers and myself. That's four. 
So you teach to. I okay. Because the teacher, the staff strength is so low okay. that I cannot leave the work for them alone. So okay. I do administration and teaching. Teachers in cities earn the same amount of money as teachers working in riverine communities. The absence of employee incentives in riverine communities is one reason teachers and other career professionals would rather choose to remain in cities where living standards are better off. There is no clean, safe drinking water in the whole of Omosomo inland. The borehole project donated to the community didn't serve its purpose. The water that came out of it was ionic, dark, dirty and unsafe to drink, hence its abandonment. When placed side by side with water fetched from the river, they look the same. The manual hand pumps also didn't serve its purpose. Same goes for the well. At present, the people are still very much exposed to the various deadly waterborne diseases known to medical science. Currently, they depend solely on the river water for drinking, bathing, cooking, and washing. And that's it. Just step on it, step on it, <laughs> and that's it. Rinse and dry. As I head back to Omosomo Waterside, I took a moment to reflect on the subtle request from the primary school children. What happens in your classroom when it rains? It leaks. It leaks. Water everywhere? Yes. You shift. You shift. Every time it rains? Yes. Has it been like that all the time? Yes. All the time? Yes. I need government to build our house. So we need government to buy our shed. We need government to build a teacher house. You don't have toilet facilities yeah. in your school, none at all. Yeah. You don't have enough teachers. Yeah. Okay. What the children are asking for are basic requirements for any primary school, but these are totally lacking in both almost more communities. After almost 20 years since the introduction of mobile telephone services in Nigeria, the revolution hasn't yet caught up full time with Omosomo. This is because there is no direct presence of a GSM company or even a GSM mast within the community. Getting signals for a mobile phone in Omosomo is a Herculean task. There are active mobile phone signals in a few communities some distance away. These signals gets thinner and becomes almost non-existent on approaching Omosomo. However, the people in Omosomo have worked out ways of making and receiving phone calls. Not pleasant methods if you ask me, but necessity, they say, is the mother of all inventions. Now, behind me is a bamboo pole, a lengthy one, with an antenna on top of it. Now what people in this community do, they connect the cable straight into their mobile phones and that's the only way they're able to get network signals on their phones and somehow it works. This is the wire that will come to the back of the phone and you have the available network that is here which is MTN and you put your hands on, people use a rubber band to hold it in place but I, I see as I don't have my own I have to use my hands to hold it in place and the network will come and that's when you can start making calls. For those who don't have a bamboo antenna within reach they simply tie up their mobile phones in strategic locations outside of their homes where signals have a stronger chance of appearing on an occasional basis. And I could see a Zamula who blew her ear for many years.
A tree just by the primary school in Omosumo Inland is another place people visit to get network signals. Underneath the tree, there is MTN network underneath the tree. That is why people are there. You know, if you take your MTN phone, then sometimes Airtel network, they have signals there if you go under the tree. I don't know why it is always under the tree, but I've tried it and uh, it worked. In Omosumo Water Side, one will have to come to the community town hall and that's exactly the place you stand you stand here to get signals Omosomo really has a lot of catching up to do in terms of development for example this is what night time looks like Rendo just imagine Rendo, Rendo child there yeah that's a jetty that light is coming from a jetty apart from the jetty and the music is also coming from the jetty nothing there's nothing there to see okay behind me there's a touch light someone walking on the path that's all you can't see anything else that's the water that's the river over there you know there's really no way people see at night in this community <laughs> it's practically impossible it's an impossible task you know it's just impossible it is a damaged house you want to know what pitch black is come to this community this community defines the word pitch black you cannot see what's in front of you you cannot see what's behind you for example, there's a sound I'm hearing now. I don't even know what it is because I can't see, you know, who's making the sound. This is the average source of light for the people in this community at night. Either a touch light or a lantern. It's the most luxury that people can afford here. The reason for the pitch darkness isn't far-fetched. There is no electricity supply in the whole of the community. Not even a single electric pole can be found in both Omosomo Waterside and Omosomo Inland. There are no solar energy powered street lights. Nothing. Nothing at all. Just darkness. And it has been this way for decades. I mean, decades. <laughs> More than seven years ago, Almost some more side had a large number of people and mud houses spread across the length and breadth of the community. Today, a large percentage of these houses have simply disappeared. Now you were saying something previously. That's because all I see here are bushes. I see that's a sugarcane mini plantation over there. A tree, bananas or are those plantains, bushes. But you said it wasn't yeah, like this. Before. It wasn't like this in those days. There were houses here, and even on this side, there are also houses. The bank of the river has not gotten to now. Nah, it's as if it's extending into the land. The river is extending to the land. Even though there were houses okay. in this area. Yeah, that's <laughs> what so what happened? Why don't During we have the houses? flood of uh, 2012, it brought down many of the houses and they were unable to build them again. In 2012, ravaging floods sacked residents of coastal towns and cities in more than seven states in Nigeria, including Delta State. This disaster was triggered by the heavy rains of that year and the subsequent release of excess water from the Lakdo Dam in Cameroon. This water flowed uncontrollably to Nigeria branching into dozens of coastal communities including Omosomo Waterside and Omosomo Inland. When the water finally receded, homes had disappeared 
residents displaced, property destroyed, farmlands and farm animals wiped out, while 363 people were reported to have lost their lives across the country. So this used to be a house. Yes. And it collapsed. It collapsed and it's just like this. Anyone see any roof like this, it collapsed and not be able to build again. Largely made up of mud houses, which could not withstand being soaked in water and being too close to a major water channel that was directly on the pathway of the approaching flood water. Omosomo Waterside was among the communities that was hit the hardest. This part used to be houses from here all the way down. But all that is gone now. They've been washed away by the water. This one survived. This building right here survived. You know? But it doesn't look good anymore. One more flood, and I bet you it's gonna be gone. With no home to return to, and unable to get direct help from the government in order to rebuild, lots of Omosomo flood victims resigned to fate, leaving their once cherished place of abode to join their loved ones in other parts of Delta State and Nigeria. While a few returned much later to commence the rebuilding process, they were yet again thrown into confusion as a second flood came visiting in 2018. Although the water levels weren't as high as that of 2012, it was still powerful enough to do great damage to homes and farmlands in both the water side and inland. <laughs> Okay, the school was in session, uh, and when okay. the flood came, yes, the is it that the entire school was flooded? It was flooded. The, did the water extend to the other side, like? Of course, it flowed through. Flowed through. Uh, we could not learn long any longer, so we vacated the school for that period. These are amateur cell phone photos taken while the water levels had reduced tremendously back in 2018. What I would like the government to do is to help if they put barricades along the river banks. It will help to curtail the flood from coming into the town like that, I would say. So, and to help so that people should not leave this village because, because of the flood, all the time they always want to leave and not want to come back. We don't want our village to become extinct. That's what I will help say the government should help us in achieving in this community. So <laughs> Providing clean, safe water will go a long way in keeping the people of Omosomo in good health. This won't be complete, however without providing well-equipped health centers in both the inland and waterside communities.
Solar powered street lamps can be adopted to improve night vision in the whole of Omosomo while they await proper electricity supply. A speedy completion of the road leading to Omosomo would be a welcome development. The primary schools within the community must be properly maintained and made attractive to children of all ages and members of staff. Months after the wooden bridge that connects the main part of Omosomo water site to the market was demolished, it is still yet to be reconstructed. This has been a presentation of Nev Harrison Productions. Get away, eh? school, daddy, no.